Welcome back to the news today. This is a one on one. What is the right way to govern in a democracy? This question has obsessed all those concerned with politics and with this week and this week. It was asked again when the state controller published a report on the expenses in the prime minister's official home. The prime minister's conduct was not conduct was not immediately described as criminal, but his conduct was brought into question. With me tonight is advocate advisor Tomer Naor from the Movement for Quality Government in Israel. Good evening. Thank you very much. Good for evening, coming. Lucy. Thank you for having me. So, uh, Tomer, let's try to understand why. You know, I'm looking at the Prime Minister's office, I'm looking at the ex expenses, I looked at the uh, controller's report, and I, and I asked myself, well, he is the Prime Minister. He needs to live in a good way, so and he... There is no doubt about it, Lucy, but what we're looking for, or what we're looking at is the fact that in one year or two years, actually, uh, the expenses of the Prime Minister residence, official residence, were actually doubled. So you're looking at 2008, 2007, about 200,000 shekel per year goes for cleaning the apartment and everything. And then in two years, it goes for almost half a million shekels. And then you ask yourself, was the home of Ehud Olmert was dirty? I, I guess not. So the question is not whether the expenses or the house should not be clean or they should not eat or they should not host, um, I don't know, Barack Obama when he comes. But how do they do that, and what do they spend the money on? You know, so this brings me uh, to the question, should democracy or should uh, the people who control democracy or lead a democracy should have limits? And that's the good question. Actually, the control is talking about that. He says that none of the costs were actually above the, the, the cost ceiling because there was no cost ceiling. So the question is, Everything that is not uh, for everything that is not allowed is forbid, and we say that the prime minister, the, the citizen number one in Israel, should set an example. So we're not looking for the days in the 50s and the 60s. You know, they keep saying David Ben Gurion or Menachem Begin. They lived in a, in a hat and they slept on I don't know on, on, in, in the in the airplanes. Yeah, because on we cannot compare back then. We to, don't we to don't want to compare that to them, but we do want to say that uh, prices in Israel are quite expensive, and people looking up to you, they don't want you to be you know driving. Uh, I don't know, 88 Chevy or something, yeah. but they do want you to be a bit more humble. They, they want you to be at least not as hedonist as you are. And I think he gets it, but he gets it a little bit too late. So what should be the limits? What, what, so what are the limits that we're talking about? We want to set uh, <laughs> a norm, basically. So don't live your life too shiny, you know, even if you have the money. And by the way, our prime minister is quite wealthy, you know, he used to give yeah. a lot of lectures and have your limits. Uh, and you know, there is no like right or wrong in that. I think the the, the controller is talking about it. Um, there should be some kind of norms of professionality, of uh, saving, uh, live your life in a way that people can look at you and say, "That's my prime minister. He gave me an example." So. You know what's the problem? Because today I spoke about it uh, mm -hmm. with uh, a journalist who came from abroad, and and I tried to explain to him because maybe you missed, uh, we missed, we mm -hmm. all missed uh, the the target. We missed the target because we spoke so much about the beha behavior of prime minister, of his wife, of uh, the way that they're not humble, they're not looking at the people in the wrong way, in the, the right way, they are not behaving in the right way. The and the, the amount of, but the amount of time that we targeted them about in the it. media, it got to the point that right now when we are hearing these numbers, when we are hearing these horrible, maybe it is a horrible yeah. way to behave, it just became to the people who are going to vote, just, but you just know, another thing. Okay, so again, the media is attacking Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and again, he is and, being and strong, is getting stronger in the polls. Some will say, Lucy, that that actually serves him, because some will say that the people who vote for Benjamin Netanyahu are the people who kept feeling like the media is against them, and they're the victims. And here, look at this guy, he's the victim as well. And maybe, as you said before, we want him to be wealthy and we want him to be shiny and we want our prime minister to live in a great house with a great car. But in one hand, I think it serves him as well because we keep forgetting that he is the prime minister of Israel and I won't say anything political in here. I come from a non-politic movement, but mm -hmm. also I have to mention that Likud party is the only one that yet haven't given the voters uh, mm -hmm any list of what they're going to do uh, after they're going to be re-elected. So 
the fact that now we're sitting here and we talk about what Benjamin Netanyahu is eating and where does he drive and about his pool in Caesarea, uh, we don't talk oh, about... No, <laughs> we know, because you know, everybody's talking about his uh, big plan with yeah. Iran and Daesh and but Hamas and security. Have you heard anything about his economic plan? How does he going to treat the, the, the big monopolies, uh, the gas, uh, the extremely expensive prices of living in Israel? We have no idea about that. Of and course you have no idea because, uh, and I will say something uh, political here, because he gave it uh, on the table and his card is security. And security is what is uh, important in Israel. And that's one thing. But that, And then again, so we open the newspapers today and we read about the battles of the wife of Benjamin, which is a very important thing. And I'll say, we, we keep using the word corruption. Um, basically, if you read the, the, the Comptroller uh, Special Reports, there's not a lot of criminal act uh, in the behavior of, of, uh, of the prime minister and his wife, although there is, and I will say, some kind of um, moral bankrupt, moral corruption even. But we talk about that. We will not talk about his political plans in the economy, society. You're right. We'll, we will talk about his big plans for Iran, whether he's going to attack or not. But that is something we should talk about. What I'm trying to understand, maybe what I'm trying to see here is uh, where do you see from your perspective mm -hmm. the state of Israel is heading? Because uh, we dealt with a lot of corruption in the last few years. We dealt with the corruption of uh, the ex-Prime uh, Minister. Prime Minister. Uh, Although I have to say when he was the mayor of Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah when yeah, he was the mayor of Jerusalem. Say, yeah. uh, with Olmert, we dealt with corruption of uh, Fuad Ben Eliezer. We dealt with corruption of, uh, of a finance minister of who's sitting in jail. Of, of, of yeah, mayors, yeah. of people who are actually and we actually now in the middle of a big one. Leading this yeah. country. So what is happening to Israel that so, is allowing so many people to actually go in the corruption way and say, okay, this is an easier... And, and of course, the last scandal is with Israel Beitein. So, so I'll say two things about it. First, um, I have my own theory. As a person who works for three years now for the Movement for Quality Governments in Israel, I kind of live those, those kind of topics. Um, I actually see it as a positive thing at the moment because I think that those things happened before and no one was able to talk about it. And I think ch something changed in the language we speak, you know. Um, we keep looking for those people. Like Something changed or we're more out there? We're more out there, we're more aware and, and just to think Eud Olmert was convicted of taking money, bribe money, and and people, you know, I'm from Jerusalem. For years, people knew that something is wrong over there. We kept yeah. looking at those big buildings, and it was like, it's impossible that, I mean, how come those buildings get permission? And now we're sitting here and we talk about 4,000 shekels the prime minister's wife took in bottles. So what I'm saying is that I believe that the the fact that we talk about those things is not because they never happened before, rather because now the, the public atmosphere, the media atmosphere, is willing to accept those things. And I'm an optimistic, you know me. Yes. And I believe that once we do our laundry uh, out there in the sunlight, um, that strengths our society as a civil society, uh, as, a, as a democracy as well. I'm kind of proud as my country that is able uh, to deal with those things uh, to out criticize there. To criticize, so. exactly. You know, what I'm uh, maybe uh, trying, are you, do you think that um, we, we like, you know, that, that this, I'm looking at the society and, and mm -hmm. I'm saying, okay, are we going in a good way or we're going to, in a bad way? Because it seems that, um, even showing the people that it's bad, mm -hmm. they're you, okay, that's it. This is Israel. Um, you know, I keep, I, I give a lot of lectures to youth and students, and once every couple of lectures, I keep hearing, you know, everybody are thieves in the politics. So we might just have the biggest thieves as a prime minister because he knows how to deal with the other thieves. Um, I think we're going in a good direction, uh, but we still have a lot, you know. No one can educate the, the society. Uh, I think was Churchill will say democracy. Like if you want to know about democracy, go ask the, the average voter. Yeah. Um, we have a party in the parliament today uh, with a convicted criminal who sets time in prison, and he's probably going to be reelected. And who knows? Maybe going to see it, like going to be um, uh, uh, sitting in the in the government. I don't know. Uh, no one can educate the, the society. I do think Lucy that. We're heading to a, good, to a better place. Tomer and our, uh, something that I can say is that Israel is have short memory. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, that's true. That's the biggest that's true, thing. That's but you know, biggest, today with yeah. the social networks and everything, no one forgets that's anymore. That's the biggest problem. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lucy, for, for having me. me. Thank you, our viewers, for being with us. Tomorrow we'll be here again.